so now we when we think about the methods being used if it was if it was bookkeeping you might have straight line method versus double declining straight lines the baseline double declining you de you depreciate more up front makers method is now going to determine the amount of years we have the class of the property which is different from bookkeeping when you have more leeway to determine it and then it, we'll talk more about the method which is usually more of a double declining oftentimes method versus a straight line method although that's a general rule and, and then uh, we're going to be depreciating it using some kind of convention now which would be and that last one was mid-month versus you know mid-year mid-quarter or something like that all right, so the next one, mid-quarter convention. Use this convention if the mid-month convention does not apply and the total depreciation basis of maker's property you placed in service during the last three months of the tax year, uh, excluding non-residential real property, residential real property, any railroad grading or tunnel bore property placed in service and disposed of in the same year, and property that is being depreciated under the method other than maker makers are more than 40% of the total depreciable basis of all uh, makers to uh, property you placed in service during the entire year. Okay, so this gets a little bit funny because you might th basically most of the other property oftentimes you might have like a mid year convention, which would be the easiest kind of thing whenever you bought it during the year, you're going to get half the year of depreciation. Now, if you were gonna to try to manipulate this rule from the taxpayer standpoint, you would say, hey, I'm not gonna buy any equipment at the beginning of the year. I'm gonna buy it all at the end of the year. Why? Because if I buy it, if I buy all the equipment like in December, then they're still gonna give me six months of depreciation at that point in time. Even though, even though I really only had one month because of a mid-year convention. And that's why they might say, well, no, we're not gonna let you do that we're going to force you to use a mid-quarter convention uh, in some cases. So you can see how that kind of pans out. Under this convention, you treat all property placed in service or disposed of during any quarter of the tax year as placed in service or disposed of at the midpoint of that quarter. Now, obviously, tax software is useful to, de to make some of these determinations. We need to know them in concept so that when people try to make those kind of more complex tax strategies, we, we can say, okay, wait, you're gonna run into a problem if you try to depreciate or buy everything at the end of the year, thinking you're gonna get a half year of depreciation for it. So this means that for 12 months tax year, 11 over two months of depreciation is uh, allowed for the quarter the property is placed in service or disposed of. So if you use this convention, enter uh, MQ, that's gonna be the sign you might see uh, change in your tax software to give you the method. So it would you would see an indication usually of a maker's method, double declining, possibly two Ds, and then an MQ instead of an MM, which would be mid-month. Under column E uh, in part three of form 4562. Caution, for purposes of determining whether the mid-quarter convention applies, the depreciable basis of the property, the place in service during the tax year reflects the reduction in basis for amounts expensed under section 179 and the part of the basis of property attributable to personal use. So 179 can kind of confuse the, you know, you might think that that might confuse your calculation in terms of when, you know, when you're gonna get the deduction because you get the 179 in period one. So however, it does not reflect any reduction in basis for any special depreciation allowance. All right, then we've got the half year convention. So use this convention if neither the mid-quarter convention nor the mid-month mention convention applies. So in actuality, this is often like the default type of convention, right? Because a lot of the equipment you put on the books, if it's not real estate, which means you would have the mid-quarter type, of, I mean, mid-month convention, if it was a big real estate, that doesn't happen all the time. If you're, then you're buying other stuff, machinery and equipment and stuff, you would think you would have the half year convention. The reason they did the half quarter convention first is because is because that would be the exception, right? You had the half year convention, but the way to think about it would normally be, okay, I'm gonna put this machinery or whatever on the books. When it, whenever I buy it, I'm gonna imagine it's gonna be depreciated in the middle of the year. Maker's depreciation method, according to the number of years they give me, according to the classification of what I'm buying, 
and then usually double declining balance oftentimes, but we'll talk about that more later. And then I'm gonna assume that it was bought in the middle of the year, which would be the half year convention, mid year convention, half year convention. Unless I bought a bunch of stuff at the end of the year, in which case the IRS would be assuming that I'm trying to take advantage of the half year or mid year convention, half year convention by taking six months of depreciation when I bought it all at the end of December, in which case I, I'm gonna have to be kicked out possibly to using like a, a, mid, a mid quarter convention or something like that possibly. Okay, so under this convention, you treat all property placed in service or disposed of during a tax year as placed in service or disposed of at the midpoint of the year. So this means that for a 12 month tax year, one half year of depreciation is allowed for the year the property is placed in service or disposed of. If you use this convention, enter HY. So that might be a little confusion. You might think it, I mean, I keep saying mid year because everything else is mid and then here they went to half year. So HY, but half year. So you're gonna see makers, usually a double D, double declining balance, HY, half year. So that's where you'd have an under column E in part three of form 4562. So C, figuring the deduction for a short tax year later for information on the short tax year rules.